Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to a new video and today I'm going to show you how to wire up a car stereo, some speakers, subwoofer amplifier and a subwoofer so that you can listen to some songs, not in your car, but at your home. So to power all of this stuff, we'll be using the Corsair VS550 power supply. Now you guys already know, this one came out of my media box PC. This will be a temporary setup because all of this stuff has to go uh, inside my car and I already have the door speakers replaced so these two speakers actually came out of my car i had these replaced with brand new sony speakers the new sony speakers that i have installed sound much much better than these and all of this stuff has been sitting at my home for a couple of months now i haven't really got time to uh, go to the dealer and have this installed so i figured why not wire all of this stuff at home and show you guys how to do it then after that i'll go and have it installed in my car and the car stereo I will be using is a Sony WX920 Bluetooth. BT stands for Bluetooth. So this one does have Bluetooth. You can stream music from your phone. But today we'll try and stream music from my desktop PC. So let's begin. And anyways, let me first show you the speakers. These are the Sony XS FB693E three-way speakers. And the amplifier I'll be using for the subwoofer is this Sony XMN502. And this one also has a low pass filter which is necessary for a subwoofer. It's bridgeable. It's a two channel amp but you can bridge it to power a single subwoofer. That is exactly what I'll be doing. And this is the subwoofer that I'll be using with this setup. Now if you guys have seen my previous videos, this subwoofer came out of my home theater system. Because the original subwoofer of my Sony home theater system, that one died and I replaced it with this car subwoofer and it works quite well. So just if you haven't seen my previous videos, here's the model number XSNW1202S and this one is rated at 300 watt RMS. So in fact this amplifier is a little weak for this subwoofer but it should work and to wire all this up. I bought this 14k speaker wire from Amazon and if you want any of these parts, all the links are down in the video description. You can buy stuff from Amazon and wire them yourself. And lastly, you'll also need this two male to male RCA audio connector that connects the head unit to the amplifier. So let's get started. So every car stereo comes with a bunch of stuff. Now this might vary from brands to brands, but this is the front faceplate goes in like this. Uh, we don't need that for home installation, but yeah, if this thing was uh, getting installed in a car, which it will, we will be needing this. So I'll save that for later. We have the manual, make sure you read the manual. We have the wiring harness, remote control with some mounting screws and then we have the microphone and the head unit itself. And this is a really nice little head unit. It's got Bluetooth, got CD and let's move at the back here. We have the different connections. The bottom one is for the subwoofer. These two are redundant. If you were connecting a power amplifier to the front and rear speakers, then we will be using this, but we don't need this because we'll be connecting the front and rear speakers through the wiring harness. So to turn a car stereo on, all you need is these three wires. Yes, it's that simple. So the black is the negative or the ground. The yellow is the positive or plus 12 volts and the Red cable here is for the accessory position in the ignition switch. Now, since we do not have an ignition switch here at home, we will connect these two together. So you'll need to connect the yellow and the red cable together. Uh, the red will also be supplied with 12 volts. So this will be one. Cable. Now coming to the power supply part, take your wire stripper and cut out this floppy disk connector or any connector that you will uh, plan not to use in the future. And we don't need the red wire, but what we do need is the yellow and the black wires. The black, again, these are the ground wires, and this is your plus 12 volt. Then you just join these two wires to the yellow wire, and the black goes to black. Let me show you. So this is all you need to do. You need to connect the black wire of the wiring harness to the black wires of the power supply, and you need to connect the red and the yellow wire to the yellow wire of the power supply. And know the red wire of the power supply, you will not connect anything here. So you can just safely uh, remove this. I'm gonna cut this 
so that I don't make any mistakes in the future. So we don't need the red wire of the power supply. And now we are going to tape this up. So you see I've taped this up so that they don't short out. Now all of these other wires, these wires are for your speakers. And these two wires, now this one, we don't need this connects to the car illumination. And this one is the remote turn on for the amp. We'll need this, but we'll connect this later on because right now I want to turn this on. Now, if you want to turn the PC power supply on without a motherboard connected, you'll need to short out the green and the black wire uh, on this ATX connector. For that, I, I'm just using a paper clip to short these two out and there should be more than enough. Now, let's see if the car stereo turns on. Let me turn the power on on the power supply. And there you have it, it does turn on. Now, next order of business is to connect the speakers. But yeah, this thing does turn on, it's just showing a demo. Now, whatever I'm showing you, everything is given here in the manual. So for example, if we want to connect the speakers, it says that the white and the white black striped wire is for the left speaker. So these two, are for the front left side speaker. Oh, and do keep one thing in mind, the wire which has a little black stripe on it, that's our negative wire. And the one without a stripe is our positive wire. And it's the same on each and every wire. So this is our green. So let's see, it says here that the green is for the rear speaker. It says green plus and green black striped is the negative for the rear speakers. So there should be two green wires here, so you can see the one with which has the stripe, black stripe, that's the negative, and the green without a stripe is the positive wire. So these are the two speakers that I bought. We'll be installing these in the rear, and these are just so much better. Yeah, oh, these are Sony. It's got a little tweeter there, mid-range speaker, and the low range, the subwoofer is down there but yeah these are really nice and these are rated at uh, 60 watts rms and with these speakers you also get the appropriate wires look at this the wire which came with these speakers the new ones this one even has a little clip and this clip clips onto this part of the speaker so these two will be our rear speakers and these two will be our front speakers but there's a little catch you see this color coding on the wire especially this one this color coding this wire came with these speakers so these wires are color coded for the front speakers but uh, since our right side rear speaker is connects to the uh, purple wires we wired this up with the purple wire First off, I'm gonna wire everything up, then I'll show you which wire goes where. All right, so I've connected the speakers. Let me show you what I've done. So these two will be our rear speakers and these two will be our front speakers, right side and the left side. So the wiring goes like this, the white and the white wire with the little black stripe, that is for our front left speaker. You can see I wired this up. The wire which has a stripe, that is the negative wire, and this is the positive. And moving on to the front right speaker, this is connected in the gray wire. So the gray wire with a stripe, that is negative, and the gray wire is the positive. Now moving on to the rear speakers, the rear left speaker, this one connects to the green wires. Again, the green wire with a black stripe, this is your negative, and this is the positive. And the speaker has its own wire so that's connected to this now moving on to the rear right hand side speaker this is connected to the purple wire and once again the same deal the wire with the black stripe that is your negative and the the other one is the positive so this is the positive this is the negative and these wires connect it connects to the speaker i'm going to tape all of these up so that they don't short out all right, so before I connect the subwoofer, let's give it a try. So I've paired the system up with my computer. So let's turn it on. And I absolutely love the LEDs. 
So let's select Bluetooth audio and play the song. Oh, by the way, this song is from No Copyright Sound Cartoon On and On. If you're wondering, the download link is in the video description. Yeah, I cannot, I cannot increase the volume too much because when the bass hits, the whole speaker starts jumping like this. So that's why that's what you heard, the little grinding noise. But it actually sounds good. I'm surprised how good these two speakers sound without even without a box. So if this was permanent, I would get a box for all of these speakers. With the box, they would sound ten times better than they do now. But yeah, the thing is, it works. Now, let's wire up the subwoofer. So here's our amplifier that we'll use to power up the subwoofer. And this is quite heavy. And here are the connectors. Just quickly, this is your plus 12 volts. That means the yellow wire goes in here. That's the ground. That's where the black wire goes. This is for the remote turn on of the amplifier. Now remember that blue wire that I showed you on the head unit, this one? Uh, this wire connects to this terminal of the amplifier and you already know that's the RCA connectors your input and this is our low pass filter we will need to turn the low pass filter on because we are connecting as a buffer I'm just gonna leave the level on at the default level we'll check that out later on and this high level input this is also redundant we don't need this for this build all right, I'm gonna wire this up and uh, I'll be back. Oh, and by the way, uh, with the amp, you get this uh, high level input connector, some screws, and then we have the manual. And yes, please, please, please read the user manual because this is very important. And I'll put the download link of these manuals in the video description so you can check them out yourself. So let me just wire this up and I'll be back. Alright guys, so this is the final setup. This is how you wire up a car subwoofer and an amplifier to a head unit at home. Now, take a look at this. These two wires are coming from the power supply. And what I've done is I have spliced out one of those CPU connectors. So, I've taken out these two. And this one can supply quite a bit of amps because we have joined the yeah, four we have joined four yellow wires. And we have joined four, four black wires. So uh, this is your ground, this is your positive, and this one goes to the car radio. Now, I did not have a blue cable, so I just used a green one. But this green wire connects to the blue cable of the car radio, and this is uh, that remote turn on. Now, this remote turn on feature turns the amplifier on automatically when you turn the power on on the head unit and switches it off when you turn the power off on the head unit. And you see that LED there that shows that the amp is turned on. Now as soon as I turn the head unit off, this will also turn off. So I'll just press that button and you'll see. So there you go. The amp just turned off with the head unit. So you don't have to worry about the amp itself and I can just leave the power supply turned on. But the power supply also has a little button here. You can just switch it off if you like. And now this whole system has been powered down and you can see there are no joints or anything this thing is going directly to our power supply and this is a 550 watt power supply so this thing is quite capable of driving all this uh, setup here now coming to the subwoofer wiring we have wired this up in bridge mode so we are using the full capacity of the amp to drive the subwoofer and you can see I'm using the black stripe wire as my negative and the other one as my positive. And of course you will need to turn on the low pass filter since we're driving a subwoofer. And this uh, line input here connects to the subwoofer out of the car radio. And the other side of the cables connects to the subwoofer. So let's power this thing up and see how it works and especially how it sounds.
A minor adjustment, I had to flip these speakers over otherwise it start jumping all over my table. That's why I'm telling you guys, you need a box for this and this is one reason why I don't recommend building this sort of system at home because look at those wires. There are just so many wires here and of course if you want you can. But... So let's increase the volume. shit this thing is I don't know what to say this thing is so much better than that little piece of crap over there holy crap and this subwoofer holy shit this thing just vibrates the entire ground um, I do wish this was a ported sub because then it would sound much better the sound would be much fuller but yeah I'm I'm quite impressed with this and I was I didn't know that this head unit had such a good amp even all these speakers sound really good and uh, I, I might get a box for these and just have them set up in my room instead of buying a set of multimedia speakers and no this amp is not overheating or anything and by the way you have this little uh, level button here you can just put a screwdriver and adjust the level of the base and make sure that the low pass filter is turned on And the amp gets a little warm, so that's completely normal. But yeah, I'm impressed with this setup. <laughs> and I haven't even touched the sound settings inside the head unit, so I'm gonna take a look at those later on. But yeah, this thing is a winner. Alright guys, so thank you for watching this video, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below, and I'll be more than happy to answer all of your queries. So thank you for watching, stay tuned for more videos like these, and I will see you guys next time.